shall not pass! All right, all right, I know I'm getting my fantasy and my sci-fi mixed up, but I had to do it. This is Maytalk, and it is quite simply a rival staff weapon. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about how this thing comes together, um, what it's made of, and ultimately it starts out as a rival weapon that has a, a, the magazine running all the way down the length of the core. So starting down here in the bottom, effectively you've got in the bottom a blower fan run off of a, a lipo and a motor here that pushes the rival rounds up the staff up to the front. And you load it down here so the cap, and let me turn it this way so you guys can see a little bit better, you pop this cap off here and that gives you an opening, you drop in your rival rounds, they roll, they go down through here and if you're inverted like so, the blower fan then puts air pressure behind all the way up the tube uh, through the magazine and pushes the rival rounds up against the top control area. So moving on up the staff, here uh, at the lower bottom area you have a control pod. And this is run off of a two switch setup. So on the bottom, the blue revs the, the fan and also the flywheels at the top which I'll talk about in a moment and the red trigger on here then runs a control wheel at the top which then pulls the rival rounds through into the flywheel so that they will shoot out. So this one's basically running four motors and this one's running the fifth motor on the system. So moving up the staff we get to uh, the control pod and the control pod is has a couple of functions. One, it controls the rate of fire and two, it also pushes the um, rival rounds out the top. Now it's I'll show I'll do some build videos you can see a little bit better what's going on inside this control pod but effectively and, it, and you, I'll throw it up there you can kind of see a little bit there is a gearbox sitting here that's onto a control wheel it's about that big and it sits down into the tube so when the air pressure pushes the rival rounds all the way up to the top here they hit this control wheel and they're stopped by the control wheel that's why when I rev it nothing comes out now, the red button again down here works that control wheel. So when that control wheel, when the rounds are pushed up against it, and then you actuate that control wheel, it turns and it forces the rival rounds through. And on the, directly on the other side of the control wheel are the flywheels on this. Now, this is an interesting setup on the flywheels because it's not a two flywheel setup. It's a three flywheel setup, not a three stage, but a three flywheel. So I've got them offset at 120 degrees to give you a full envelopment. Uh, the crush, I think, is about 43.5 millimeters off center. Uh, you divide that by two, and that's how far each flywheel uh, is off of the center of the rival round. But it gives almost a complete, sort of, and you can't really see it because the flywheels are black in there. They're, they're cyclones. Um, but it gives you a, a full envelopment of the rival round, squishing the whole thing down, and then as it goes, it goes out the top. So anyways, this blaster, um, came together over a period of a couple months. Uh, it was something that really I have been excited about and, and excited to put together and excited to, to show you because I have not seen anything like that. I've seen reproductions of um, Maytalk for different um, like Comic-Con events and things like that. And I've seen other you know, high capacity rival blasters that are pretty innovative. I've never seen the two put together and to make what is a effectively a staff weapon. So this was, this was a brainstorming effort that uh, I had with another um, uh, member of EP Nerf, Harry. And we went through and we were talking about putting Prometheus up here. And we decided, you know, what would be cool is if the magazine could hold that. And so that came the genesis of the idea and it put the whole thing through. Uh, one last mention on the control pod is the um, the firing trigger is slaved to the rev trigger, so the rev trigger also uh, acts as a master cutoff. If you're not revving, it's not going to execute the wheel, and you're not going to be able to push rival rounds out into the flywheels. So anyways, let's take this thing over, uh, put it on the chronograph, 
uh, get some readings on where those come in, and then we'll talk about some final thoughts. Okay, so you can see from those numbers that it's getting pretty good performance. Uh, showing about 105, 108 FPS rabbit average. Those were genuine rival rounds, new out of the package. With some of the harder um, rounds, like some headshot ones and some other ones, I've actually gotten in the 120s and even up to almost 130 FPS. Because of the way that crush and completely envelops it, if you've got a harder round, it's going um, to take more pressure to squeeze it and it's going to impart more velocity on, onto it. Also, one thing I did mention before, that control wheel is also sitting at the very bottom of the axis. So the control wheel actually gives you the hop-up on the firing mechanism. A lot of times when you're shooting a rival, you put a little nub on the, uh, upper, on the top side of your barrel. So after you go through your flywheels or you're coming out of, your, out of your breech, that the round hits that nub and then gets that backspin. And that gives it that nice lift and a nice flat trajectory. This has the same type of a trajectory, but it does it a little bit differently. Instead of a nub to knock the rifle around spinning backwards, the control wheel actually turns the round backwards before it goes into the flywheel. And therefore, that, the, the round stays rotating backwards as it's going through the flywheel, and it gives it, gives it just enough of a hop-up to you know, gives it that nice, flat trajectory. So anyways, this is Maytalk, rival-based staff weapon. Uh, capacity of about 90 rounds, uh, magazine down the shaft with a blower fan, 2S LiPo, control pod, and three flywheels. Thanks for watching. Oh, oh, and, and one more thing I wanted to state. No Nerf blasters were harmed in the making of this video. Thank you.